What's up guys, this is Marcus from Studio One Expert and today we're gonna to be having a look at demystifying the replace mode within Studio One version three. All right, so first off, I'm just gonna open up my record panel. Shortcut here is Shift Option R on a Mac. Okay, so I don't know about you guys, but one of the things that was confusing for me when I moved over to Studio One is the absence of the overdub tab in the bottom left here. So we see we have these three different options down here, one of them being replace, another one is takes to layers, another one is input quantize. So we're all pretty familiar with takes to layers and what that does when you activate it. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail on that. But what I do wanna expand upon a little bit is the replace mode. Okay, so I've got a track set up here and uh, let's just go ahead, make this a little bit larger so we can see what we're doing. So first off, what I'm gonna do is with the uh, record panel set up exactly like it is right now, which is nothing is selected here, let's go ahead and let's just start recording some audio. Okay, so I'm recording some audio here and what we're gonna be having a look at is we're gonna be having a look at the replace function and the different states and how we can use it. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop right there. Okay, so we've just gone ahead and recorded a pass. So what I wanna do now is I'm not gonna use any pre-roll or auto punch or punching in. I'm just gonna be dropping in and out of the record mode manually using my asterisk key, which is a shortcut to record. Okay, so now with this set up exactly how it is right now, let's just go ahead right now, I'm gonna press play, and then I'm gonna just drop in manually and I'll probably drop out as well. Okay, so I'm recording some audio here, and what we're gonna be having a look at, so I'm just gonna drop into record mode here, and I'm not really interested as to whether or not it fits or not. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop right there. Okay, so let's have a look at this audio here. We can zoom in a little bit further here, and if I play this back here, I'm gonna stop talking, and when you see the cursor moving, that's happening on the playback. What we're gonna be having a look at, so I'm just gonna drop into record mode here and I'm not really interested. Okay, so this functions pretty much exactly as we would expect it to. Okay, fair enough, so let's go ahead and undo this. Let's wind back to the beginning. This time, let's enable the replace mode. So let's make sure that it's active and we can see that by the blue color. Okay, so now the replace mode tab is active. So let's do the exact same thing. I'm gonna press start from the beginning and I'm gonna drop in manually. Okay, so I'm recording some audio here, and what we're gonna be having a look at is dropping in, and I'm just talking for the sake of talking, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop out, use it, okay. Okay, so we can see here that it didn't do anything different. So I don't know about you guys, but when I first started uh, using version three, this was something that confused me a little bit. Now, I never really used the overdub function in version two, but the biggest thing that confused me was that the results that I got seemed to be the exact same, regardless of whether I had replace mode active uh, in blue or off as it is now. So if I have it active or off, I got the exact same result. So I did a little bit of digging, and one of the things that I found out is that in version three, one of the changes that we have from version two is that in version two, the function of play overlaps uh, was a global setting that we found in our preferences. But in version three, you can see here that this is all track-based. So we can enable the play overlaps on a track-by-track -track basis when we're working in version three. So this is where the replace mode tab kind of comes into play. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna activate play overlaps in this track. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna come down to the bottom here, and I'm gonna click the Replace tab. So this is active now. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna press play, and I'm gonna manually drop into record mode. Okay, so I'm recording some audio here, and I've dropped into record mode, and I'm just gonna start talking, and I'll stop right about now, and the different states and how we can use. So now this functions pretty much identical to the way it functioned before when we had this parameter play overlaps unchecked. So if I wind this back to the beginning, or I'll just play from here, some audio here, and I've dropped into record mode and I'm just gonna start talking and I'll stop right about now and the different. So that's gone ahead and it's replaced the audio that was on that track. So now, Let's deselect this replace mode and let's do that exact same drop-in. 
and let's see how that behaves. Okay, so I'm recording some audio here, and now I'm dropping in, and I'm gonna just continue talking over here. Probably gonna talk a little bit longer, and I think that I'll probably drop out right about here. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop right there. All right, so now we can see that we have uh, some overlapping audio that's on our track here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just wind this back to the beginning here, and now let's go ahead and play that. Okay, so I'm recording some audio here, and, and now we're gonna I'm going to be having a look at, and I'm going to just have a look at talking the replace over here, function, probably, and then we can pick it up from here, right about it. here. Okay, so I think I'm going to go ahead and. All right, so what we can kind of take from this is that this parameter here, when we're working in normal modes, normal loop recording modes, or normal recording modes, when we have the play overlaps deselected. This actually, it doesn't matter which mode you use, to be honest. You could have it set to replace, or you could have the replace set to be uh, inactive, so we could have it grayed out. But the only time that this really comes into play is in a scenario where we need to record and we want to have an overlap on the actual track. So let's talk about the practical application for this, something where this would kind of make sense and how we can kind of put this into practice. Well, let's just pretend for a second here that this boring voiceover is um, a verse on a, on a track or a chorus, doesn't matter, or a phrase of any sort. So let's just say that we're going to wind this back to here. And let's say this is our first pass of recording and we were happy with that. Now let's say that at this point here, we're going to have a slight overlap. So rather than pulling up two tracks and kind of setting them to a bus, and then doing all our processing on that bus. Let's say that we just have these specific areas where we wanna have an overlap just on one word. So this is where this is gonna come into play. So in this particular case, I wanna make sure that my replace is not active, so it's grayed out. And then what I can do is I can just go ahead here and let's set our pre-roll up. And I've already placed my cursor exactly where I want it to happen. So let's just say we want it to happen right about there. Zoom out a little bit. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch in from just that point and the different states and how, and we're just gonna see how this works. Okay, so now we have that track. Because we had the replace inactive, we're gonna get the overlap because we have this parameter set to play overlap. So let's go ahead and play this track from here and the different states and how we can And we're use just gonna see how this works. Okay, so hopefully you guys got something from that. I know when I kind of finally figured this out, I was happy because I at least knew what it did. Now, I don't tend to use this type of workflow too often, uh, doing overdubs and having waveforms overlapping each other and playing on the same track, but I can definitely see that there are certain times where it has its use, and you know it's, this can come in really handy. So anyways, I hope you guys got something from that, and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.